So the Tokyo Paralympic Games for 2020 just ended on September 5th in 2021. Around this time, terms like inclusivity and representation can feel like buzzwords that are just haplessly thrown around. The same media that tends to shout these slogans can also make it feel hollow and create these inspiration porn fantasies while alienating those that the media claims to represent. Hearing about super fast parahero Gandine for the first time made me both really excited but extremely nervous. This tokusatsu niche that I love is going to do a series about a para-athlete who transforms into a superhero. And even more, when they're transformed, they're still going to use their wheelchair. And while I think that's a really cool concept, there are a ton of Western superheroes with disabilities. And in my opinion, conceptually, most of them leave a bad taste in my mouth in the way they deal with disabilities. So this made me worry. Does super fast parahero Gandine respect para-athletes? Or is it little more than inspiration porn? Super Fast Parahero Gandine is a three-part miniseries broadcast on NHK General TV from June 26th to July 10th, 2021. The three episodes are about 40 minutes each. So if you're comparing this to a typical tokusatsu show, it's about double the runtime, giving it more room to tell a story and develop its characters. And if you're already a tokusatsu fan, it's full of familiar faces. From Soa Kuno from Kamen Rider G, Fuka Kashiba from Tokusatsu Gagaga, Ga, Takeshi Saruno from Ultraman Dyna, and Karasu Hayashi from Ultraman Z. Directed by Takanori Sujimoto, known for his involvement in the Ultraman series, and written by Yukiko Mananaba and Hiratoshi Kobayashi. With effect work done by Marblin Fine Arts, Shinji Nishikawa, known for his work on the Heisei Godzilla films. The races for the show were choreographed by Nobukazu Hananoka from the International Paralympic Committee and features multiple professional para-athletes in its race scenes. The show follows 17-year-old high school student Daishi, a promising para-athlete who competes in wheelchair racing. Being introduced to his new coach, Fukai, the show's narrator who has fourth wall breaking conversations with the audience and was formerly a track and field competitor. She harbors feelings of failure and is afraid she will fail Daishi as his coach. Daishi has a sunny disposition about life and racing that echoes a typical hero of justice archetype, but he has doubts and is masking his fear behind a smile, afraid if he shows disappointment, he's letting everyone down. Exemplified by after losing a race, he just waves the loss off in front of his family, later revealing how he feels like he's already let everyone down and he can't let them down further by feeling disappointed. What I like about his character is that he's not just putting on a brave face because he's a hero. He's putting on an act because he feels the weight on his shoulders and he feels like he has to. Daichi has a very supportive makeshift family around him. His only blood relative is his dad, Gen, the owner of a mechanic shop who wants to give the world to his son. His neighbor, Ryo, who works for the family part-time, making questionable meals for dinner, who's always seen with a grumpy attitude and a quirky style, and a trio of shop workers who are mostly here for moral support and providing comic relief. Daichi and Coach Fukai form a strong competitor to coach relationship. Daichi attempting to mask the pain from an injury, while Coach Fukai tells him the importance of being honest so she can always fight his battles alongside him as his coach. Meanwhile on Alert Star, Earth's twin planet in another solar system, Gu, a native alien, is fleeing the Eltrons, an invading race that wants to eliminate all life on Alert Star. Gu escapes in an escape pod that collides with the Earth, and just so happens to fall into Daichi's backyard. Once the pod opens, Gu falls into Daichi, transferring powers and abilities. Once a monster attacks, Gu hands Daichi a mode shifter, giving him the ability to transform into Gandine. Gandine is powered by plant-derived technology developed on Alert Star, giving Daichi superhuman strength and speed. I absolutely love this transformation. It feels both significantly alien and organic. This isn't just a suit, but a plant-based shell. The headpiece doesn't feel like a helmet. It feels otherworldly. The body of the suit is made to look like vines wrapping around the body. That also doubles to look like muscles and tendons, connecting his humanity with his alien power. The overall art direction of the show is great. The puppetry of the monster is both organic and alien, just like Gandhi. There's use of both green screen and actors in traditional rubber suit monster outfits. And the main villainess 
I think looks really cool, feeling like some kind of ethereal witch god. The special effects as a whole is kind of interesting. They never cross the line to being offensive, but towards the climax of the show, it does start to feel a little busy and disconnected, causing some effects to look better than others. But at their worst, they're never enough to take me out of the scene. And then there are scenes that I think have a really high level of cinematic appeal, and it really helps to elevate the show over top of the standards of production from your typical tokusatsu show. All of the composite shots, camera work, and set designs are really top notch here. I particularly like the alert star scene where you see Goo fleeing and dodging laser fire, and then flying off in a practical effects Star Wars style spaceship. When it comes to its story, well, the plot's a little thin. And while in some cases I might point to that as a bad thing, and I've seen some people scoff at the villain not really having a strong motivation, I think this does the show a great service. Because this isn't a show about the plot. There is one, it's simple and straightforward but it's not where the heart of the show is. This is a story about characters, and on the ground of the characters, it's a really strong drama. When it comes to the main cast, with the exception of maybe Goo, they are all three-dimensional characters. They all have the traits of a cliche stereotype, but they never really stay that way for more than a minute or so. I was absorbed into the character drama of the show way more than the good versus evil superhero plotline. It's a show about relationships, limits, pride, strength, and ultimately failure. Super Fast Para Hero Gandine does not talk down to its audience. One of the big pluses of this being a 40 minute show versus a 20 minute show is that you get to spend more time with the characters through the framing of an episode. Every episode I was drawn in and I cared about the personal development of the main cast. When it got back around to becoming a transforming superhero show, I was almost caught off guard because I forgot it's supposed to be a superhero show. I think overall, it's really respectful of the main character using a wheelchair. There's definitely a part of me that wishes there was a disabled actor who was chosen to play the part, but I can't change that. And reading interviews with Soa Kuno, it seems like he took the part really seriously, spending the months before shooting living his life in a wheelchair to get a better understanding of the mindset and the body movements it takes when it's not necessarily a worldview you would have. Noting things like transferring from a wheelchair to a toilet seat. Special effect designer Nishikawa has also stated in interviews that he wanted to give children who use wheelchairs a hero that they can project themselves onto. This even comes down to the design of Gandine's suit. Its upper body is modeled to be bulkier than the lower body to help emphasize the typical body of a para-athlete, going out of his way to challenge what people think of when they think of something cool, working hard to create a henchin hero who breaks away from traditional designs. Throughout the show, Daichi has his wheelchair upgraded by his father, and it eventually ends up as the Hyper Wheel, a superhero variation of a three-wheeled racing wheelchair, providing a superhero vehicle but still keeping it close to its para-athlete roots. Now that I've seen all three episodes of Super Fast Para Hero Gandine, I really, really like it and I highly suggest you go watch it. I was worried that it wouldn't be sensitive or treat wheelchair users as a punchline. Growing up, my mother had limited mobility and it made me think about things like accessibility in different ways than I might have otherwise. But I don't use a wheelchair and I don't think I get a final say on if a piece of media is represented or alienating. But I do think that Gandine used its characters as characters and stayed far away from using a disability as a personality trait. I also think that if there was no wheelchair user in this show that it would be just as strong of a show. It wouldn't need some huge rewrite to make it all make sense. All of the cast felt like a huge family and really pulled me into the drama, making me truly care about them as individual people. And that's the sign of really rich character work. In my personal opinion, this show does not fall into the trap of being inspiration porn. It just makes for a really good superhero show. That's it for me, and honestly, I think this video, more than any other video, I'd really love to hear more people's thoughts and opinions on this show. So if you'd like to join the conversation, please leave a comment on your feelings on Gandhi. I'm Hi-C, and I hope you keep watching.